Please welcome Chief Drake from Los Angeles uh, Fire Department. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is John Drake. I'm a battalion commander for the LAFD, and I am assigned to our planning section. And I'm fortunate enough to have my right hand, left arm, and right leg and left leg here uh, in the name of Captain Kristen Crowley, who's also assigned to the planning section. And you're right, we are embarking on an endeavor that is unprecedented in the history of the LAFD. As a matter of fact, I've heard some of our professors at the University of Southern California say, you mean you're a $550 million organization and you don't have a strategic plan? <laughs> and yeah. the bottom line is you're right. Yeah. And you referenced the uh, city coffers. The city is $7.7 .7 billion budget. The LAPD is $1.3 billion. The LAFD is $550 million. And third is Department of Public Works. When you look at all those other organizations, they have strategic plans. We hear a lot of feedback from our own people say, you know, the LAFD is not engaged. How many of you would agree with that? So only one person? Are we, are we engaged with the community? Are we engaged with the neighborhood? That's why we're here. Do you know who we are? Yeah. Well, we know. When you call us. Yeah. yeah. On a community base or a neighborhood council base, are we engaged enough for all that? No. 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 We show up and participate in what we're doing. You guys are too busy. That's good to hear. In our district, we, we are. We are very busy. We are very busy. We do over 400,000 calls a year now, 85% of which are emergency medical service calls. And that would basically say that about 335,000 of our calls in the upcoming year will end up in emergency medical service. Can you yeah. Sure. So what, what we need to do is ensure that we are more engaged in the community. So this is the first time in the history of the LAFD that we have embarked upon a strategic planning process. And fortunately, we are doing this in partnership with the University of Southern California. Why? Because that lends credibility to the process. It's going to make sure that we get it right since we haven't done it before. So what I'd like to do is navigate our way through this uh, PowerPoint. It was, well, first of all, it was great to hear that there's such a representation. Uh, how many neighborhood councils? Is it 35 to 50? But how many do we have? Well, there's 95, but how many are here today? That's fantastic. That's why this is such a great outreach opportunity for us. Kristen, am I going to be the, the slide guy? So let's tell you where we've already started. Again, this is an affiliation with the University of Southern California. And we've also had the mayor's office, the city council involved in this. The city administrative office, we've attempted to have our labor organizations involved. Fortunately, and I didn't realize what a godsend this was to involve the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, and what a zealot Stephen Box has been. <laughs> I mean zealot in a good way, because he has just taken the survey monkey thing and, and gone with it. We need it, because this is that community outreach component that we've missed too much in the past. So if you can see also that we've... Uh, We've involved our own internal, we call it the internal and external stakeholders. Internally, it's the top brass of the organization. Uh, we do have a new fire chief as of yesterday, so Chief Featherstone, I am certain will be also embracing this, but you can see, I won't go through every one of uh, the LAFD stuff that's involved in that, but it's basically our top staff. And you're right, when you look at our organizational chart, we have one of you call a a linear, scalar, hierarchical organizational <laughs> chart that is predicated on a paramilitaristic organization, which lends itself to me that you're not really horizontal flat enough to start engaging in the communities. And that's something that we need to improve on. So that's again why we're here. So really, what is the strategic plan? What does it mean to all of you? Great. I, 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 I still she said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that's exactly right. When you think about it, a strategic plan is trying to identify the vision of where you want to be in three to five years. But you have to charter a course and navigate your way through that course that you've chartered before you can get to that vision. And that plan is what gets you there. And that's what we're trying to develop at this stage right now. So it is our organizational vision for the future. It gives us organizational direction. And I'm a big believer that 
you have to have way in for buy-in. We could remain in that silo and come up with our strategic plan the way we think it needs to be. And, and what do you think it's going to be effective with? The same old paradigm that the LAFD has been. It's going to, it's going to have that same LAFD perspective, that autocratic linear scale or hierarchical type of organization that doesn't reach out to the, the community. And that's exactly <coughs> what we do. And that's why we're here again. So it identifies core beliefs. It talks about how we're going to identify those priorities and achieve our goals. And ultimately, it will get us to that best public service model. And the best public service model doesn't mean just responding to emergencies. Because honestly, I think that's what we do great. Over 1,100 times a day, our people come out and they do a fantastic job. But there's a lot more to an organization of our size, the community outreach, the, the neighborhood issues, that we need to get more involved. So we're, it's going to be that organizational roadmap, just like it said. Chartering a course, navigating that course, and figuring out where your priorities are. See, we've always just developed things, and we go on calls, but we really haven't solicited that input to establish what our goals are, what our objectives are, our measures of achievement, the, the people that are responsible for doing those, the timelines, all those things are inherent to an effective strategic plan to make sure that we do effectively reach out to the community. We are trying to create more customer value. And I have to say this on behalf of LAPD, I think they do a great job of it. LAPD has what they call senior lead officers, and I think all of you know that, don't you, because you are very involved in uh, who is your senior lead officer for the LAFD? We don't have them. We don't have them, do we? So that's one of my arguments, is I feel that we should have what we call either a fire lead officer or emergency services lead officer that works in concert with our LAPD contingent so that we can unify and start achieving more of those community-based objectives that we need to. We're missing the mark. We're going to stop missing the mark. All right, so we do have some obsolete methods. We want a new approach. We have new leadership. We are a large organization, again, without that plan. So we need to identify and really revive our missions, our goals, and our visions. And we're in the process of that. But the first component of that involves what we call an environmental assessment. And in this environmental assessment, what we have done with the mayor's office, the council, and the, uh, many of our other internal stakeholders and external stakeholders is identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the organization. And then on a greater macro level, the political, economic, social, and technical components <coughs> would make the department better as well. So this is a comprehensive process that's going to take us probably five or six months. You won't see it come out until the beginning of the year before we do that. And a major component that we can't neglect is you. If we do this with the mayor's office and city council and the politicians and we neglect the 470 miles comprising the city or the 95 neighborhood councils or the 3.8 million residents, because you represent them, don't you? You represent those people. So we're missing it if we don't do that. So what our goal here today is to do is with our environmental assessment is to provide you an opportunity to tell us what major things. What are your expectations of the LAFD? We want to know what the areas of concern that you have are and any positive comments or strengths because we want to reinforce the things we're doing right and we want to fix the things that we're not doing right. So we want to know the areas of concern, the positive things or comments you have to say and it's not to break our back and say how oh, great we are, it's to reinforce those things that we're doing right. And then uh, gather just a, any other input you have, might have on it. So we passed out a one page sheet to all of you and again, we really want to reach out to the 3.8 million. That really gets to over 4 million at the peak of the day. But again, you represent them. This is a hard copy of what we're doing. And we also have, um, you'll see on the bottom of your sheet as well, we'll put a site up there that you can access. Or please communicate to those you represent that there is a poll on the surveymonkey.com slash S slash LAFD that has the same information that's on that one sheet of paper. Real quick, Chief. Uh, Steve, can you talk about the newsletter and the link that you already have set up for us? That would be great. So if you go to the, uh, does everyone get the uh, Power LA newsletter? Yeah. Yes. Does everyone get City Watch? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, if you go to last night's newsletter, you'll see an article on this uh, fire department strategic plan. The link is in that article. It's also on the Empower LA website right in the center. We'll see an article on the LA uh, Fire Department strategic plan.
the link is in there. It will also be on the right side of the upcoming newsletters. So you should be able just to forward it by forwarding the newsletter or steer them to the, um, the Power LA's uh, page. All right, so uh, before we do, because I'm going to ask questions at the end of this, we're asking you a favor, not just to fill out these pieces of paper, because they do matter to us. We are going to use those. They're not going to collect us. But we're asking you to reach out to those you represent and ensure that they click onto that site. We try to make it as painless as possible. It's one page only, and just put some comments down on those areas so that we can derive the information that we want, we can compile it, and, and really use that to better the organization with our community plan. Okay, I'm done. Uh, one more thing, Chief. Um, there will be follow-up surveys once we do collect the data. Sorry, once we do collect the data um, from the initial surveys, uh, we're going to take that, compile that, and then we're going to basically have eight to nine priorities in which we need all of you, all the neighborhood council people, to actually prioritize. So we'll categorize them, then we need you to prioritize them. So we'll probably utilize the same link um, and then be able to collect that data from everybody, and that will be interlaced throughout our strategic plan. All right, questions? 